The 7th and the 8th century was a tumultuous period in saints' history. We have all heard about how a minister named Church usurped the throne of Sindh. And it was his son, whose name was Dahir, who fought the Arabs when they invaded Sindh. Now this is the broad detail which I think most of us know. But when it comes to the finer detail of this period's history, there are many problems and there are also some inconsistencies within the sources. So what we will do in this video is, first we will try to analyze multiple sources from which we can construct since history and we will also look at the history from the usurpation of church to the accession of Dahir. If we talk about sources, although we have some Arab sources and the famous Chinese Chinese traveler Wenzang has also mentioned Sindh, but the main source about the history of Sindh before the coming of the Arabs is Chachnama. It was written in 13th century and its author Ali Kufi tells us that it is a Persian translation of an original Arabic work. Chachnama is the only primary source that tells us how Chach usurped the throne of Sindh. And if we read the text, the story goes like this. The last ruler of the Rai dynasty was someone called Rai Sahasi II. And Rai Sahasi had a Brahmin minister whose name was Ram. One day, a Brahmin presents himself to minister Ram. The name of this Brahmin was Chach. Chach tells minister Ram that he belongs to a priestly family who lives near the capital Alor. His father Selaj and his brother Chandar served a temple. Chach, on the other hand, wanted to seek employment under the minister Ram. According to Chachnama, in this meeting, Chach also tells minister Ram that he had all the four books of the Hindu religion on the tip of his tongue. This is a clear reference to the Vedas. After the meeting, Minister Ram is impressed by the eloquence and the knowledge which Chach has displayed. So he allows Chach to join him as a sort of an assistant. Now one day, Minister Ram was called in the royal court, but he was not in the city. So in his place, Chach goes to the royal court. And when the king assigns him task and finally the task is complete, the king is quite impressed with how Chach has done the job. So gradually we find that most of the work which the king assigns to Ram is done by Chach. And when minister Ram dies, Chach becomes the new minister. After becoming the minister, Chach frequently visits the royal palace. And one day, the queen of Rai Sahasi sees Chach and she falls in love with him. Now here I must also say something about the royal couple. According to the Chachnama, the royal couple were childless and Rai Sahasi was under the full control of his queen. Chachnama then goes on to tell us how the love between the queen and Chach blossomed. Alongside this, Chach's control over the entire kingdom of Sindh was increasing day by day. The Rai did not take any decision without the consultation of Chach. And soon, Chach's orders in the name of Chachnama came to be strictly obeyed throughout the dominion. But this would not continue for long because the Rai soon fell ill. Chachanama does not give any suggestion about whether he was poisoned by Chach or his queen. But what we do know from the narrative is that gradually his illness worsened and the Rai finally dies. But the news of Rai Sahasi's death was kept secret from the royal court and the public by the queen and Chach. The public and the royal court still believed that Rai Sahasi was ill. In the meantime, most of the influential relatives of the Rai were brought to the capital and they were put to death by the orders of Chach. Since the orders of Chach were believed to be the words of the Rai himself, Chach was able to create a false propaganda that these killings are ordered by the Rai himself because he has uncovered a plot against his life in which these relatives of his 
were involved. After these killings, Church also gathers a full assembly in which he informs the important officials and governors that the Rai has appointed him the vice regent of the realm. The governors and the minister did not find anything suspicious in this order because even before the illness of the Rai, it was Church whose orders were obeyed throughout the kingdom. And by the time the death of Rai Sahasi was publicly announced, Church, with the help of the queen, had gathered the support of most of the important ministers and noble. Now, when this news of the death of Rai spread in the neighboring kingdoms, Chachnama tells us that a king of Jitor invaded the kingdom of Sindh. Now, this king of Jitor is clearly the king of Chittor. And according to Chachnama, in a message to Chach, this king of Jitor tells Chach that I am the rightful heir to this kingdom and this country is the property of my father and grandfather. It is but right that I should have for my own my brother's heritage. From this account, it is quite clear that there was some sort of relation between the Rayas of Sindh and the kings of Chittor. Now coming back to our story, we are told that this king of Jittor finally invades Sindh. And when the two army met, we are told by Chachnama that Chach, through his deception, was able to kill the king of Jitor. Having tackled a foreign enemy, now it was the job of Chach to bring in order the kingdom itself. As we have all seen, the kingdom of Sindh was divided into four governorship. And when Chach usurped the throne, we find that these four governors had declared independence. Chach Nama tells us that Chach gradually was able to bring all of these four governors under his submission. So this is how, according to Chach Nama, Chach usurped the throne of Sindh. Now here I must also say that all of the detail that is mentioned in Chachnama cannot be true. There are clear romantic elements that are added in this text which makes this work more of a chronicle than a work of history. Although we can debate which part of Chachnama are historically true and which part are the product of Ali Kufi's imagination, but the fact remains that we have only Chachnama that talks about these periods of Sindh history. So we have to rely on it. Having said that, there are also many inconsistencies in Chachnama. Take for example, Chach's invasion of Makran. In Chachnama, we are told that this invasion of Chach happened in the second year of the Hijri era, which means that between 623 and 624 AD. Alongside this, Chachnama also tells us that this invasion of Chach happened when the kingdom of Faras was in the hands of a woman. Now, this is an important detail for us. The kingdom of Faras here is the Sasanian Empire. And Arab historians tell us that the kingdom of Faras or the Sasanian Empire after the death of Khusro Parvez was ruled by his two daughters. The first daughter ruled between 629 and 630 AD and the second daughter's rule lasted for two years, which means that both these daughters of Khusro Parvez ruled between 629 to 632 AD. So you can see here the inconsistency of Chachnama. On the one hand, this invasion of Makran by Chach, we are told, happened in the second year of the Hijri era which is 623-624 AD. And on the other hand, when the kingdom of Faras was in the hands of a woman, which would be between 629 to 632. So there is this inconsistency, which we can all see. Now, this is not the only instance where the internal narrative of Chachanama is not consistent. If we look at this invasion of Makran by Chach, we are told that this happened when Chach was ruling Sindh for five years. If we assume that this invasion happened in the second year of the Hijri era, then it would mean that this invasion happened in 623 to 624 AD, which means that the reign of Chach began in 618 to 619 AD. According to Chachnama, 
Chech reigned for a total of 40 years, which means his reign lasted up to 658 to 659 AD. After Chech, we are told by Chechnama that his brother Chandar ruled for a total of 7 years, which means his reign lasted up to 666 AD. After Chandar, the son of Chech became the next king. His name was Dahir and he was 15 years old when he became the king of Sindh. The reign of Dahir as we all know ended in 712 AD. This would mean that when Dahir fought the Arab commander Muhammad bin Qasim, he was over 60 years of age. But the same Chachnama and other sources tell us that when Dahir fought Muhammad bin Qasim, he was much younger. So you can see here how the two dates within the text does not match each other. Having said that, since we do not have any other source, we have to rely on Chachnama. So let's see what Chachnama tells us about how Dahir became the king of Sindh. According to Chachnama, Chach had two sons, Dahar Syah and Dahir. He also had a daughter whose name was Bai. The mother of these two sons was the queen of Rai Sahasi who Chach had married, whereas the mother of the daughter Bai was someone else. Chachnama tells us that after the end of Chach's reign, his brother Chandar became the next king. He ruled for some seven years. Now it is clear from the narrative that when Chandar became the ruler of Sindh, the two sons of Dahir were not minor. When Chandar's reign ended, we are told that Chandar's son, whose name was Raj, he tried to establish himself as a ruler from Brahminabad, but he failed. Now, after this failed attempt of Raj, we are told that from Brahminabad, Dahir Shah became the ruler. Whereas from the capital Alor, it was Dahir who crowned himself as the new king. So now there were two kings in Sindh. At this point, Chachnama introduces us to a new character, the king of Ramal. Sobhan Rai Bhatia was his name and he asks the hand of Chach's daughter, Bai. The king of Ramal, according to some scholars, is the king of Jaisalmer. So here, Ramal is Jaisalmer. Whereas, Sobhan Rai Bhatia, Bhatia could be Bhati. So this king of Ramal wants to marry the daughter of Chach, Bai. And apart from this, he also wants a frontier fort in return of this marriage. To this proposal, Dahir initially agrees. But before the final marriage arrangements, Dahir goes to an astrologer. And he asks the astrologer what would be the future of his kingdom. The astrologer tells us that he will enjoy his kingdom for a long time. Then Dahir asks about the fortune of his sister, Bai. To this, the astrologer replies, and I quote, My calculations lead me to the inference that she shall never go out of this fort of Alor, and that no one shall be married to her except the king, who shall have the kingdom of Hindustan under his sway and dominion. This girl shall be united to him by the tie of marriage. Now, this was not the kind of response which Dahir was expecting. If this prophecy was correct, then it would mean that whoever married Dahir's sister, then he would become the king of Hindustan. So now Dahir is quite worried with this prophecy. He does not know what to do. So he goes and seeks the advice of his minister whose name is Budhiman. Budhiman offers a very radical advice. He tells Dahir and I quote, As the astrologer has thus directed, you ought to marry your sister and seat her with you on the throne. Now poor Dahir was not expecting this kind of advice. So what he does is he gathers a meeting of 50 of his close advisors. There he says and I quote, To cut oneself from a kingdom is a very difficult thing and what Wazir Budhiman considers expedient involves a great disgrace, is immoral and will bring dishonor on our Brahman family. 
when this disagreeable news reaches the ears of other kings of our time and is in mouths of the public, they will excommunicate us and a confusion will arise in our religion. So now Dahir is quite perplexed. The minister Budhiman who has given this advice of marrying Bai, he says to Dahir and I quote, O king, whatever happens whether good or evil, the people's tongue wag about it for three days only. Thereafter, no one remembers whether it was good or evil. And to cut the story short, Dahir eventually marries Bai, his half-sister. Now, one question which naturally arises here is that whether this incident is true or not. In my view, this incident is clearly the product of author's imagination. We should remember that although we treat Chachnama as a historical work, it is far from it. It is a dasta or epic which has great amount of romantic elements in it. It is this nature of Chachnama that has led historians to question the entire text. In the words of Sir Henry Elliot, Chachnama reads more like a romance than history. Historian S.H. Hodiwalas, while describing Chachnama, argues that Chachnama has overgrown with legendary matters. Thus, in my view, we should only take into account the broad narrative from Chachnama. Most of the minor details that are present in Chachnama may not be true. Now let's see what Chachnama tells us happened after Dahir had married his sister Bai. We find that there was a conflict between Dahir Sya and Dahir because Dahir Sya did not like the fact that Dahir had married his sister. But thankfully for Dahir, Dahir Sya soon dies, leaving Dahir the sole master of Sindh. Meanwhile, the Arabs have arrived on the borders of Sindh and gradually they are moving eastwards. Now, what will happen during this invasion will be covered in this video, which will be uploaded soon. And you can watch this video to know about the history of the Rayas of Sindh. If you like this channel, do subscribe. Thank you for watching.